One of the things that fascinated me is why schools do well despite the lack of resources, despite the fact that their teachers are not, you know, the uh, best paid or the best, uh, you know, uh, uh, qualified in the world, despite the fact that the parents, you know, can contribute very little to the upkeep of the school, despite the fact that they're in deep rural areas where everything, you know, uh, uh, especially in resource terms, is more difficult for kids just to get to school. It's much more difficult than when you're in the city, etc. So I wanted to know why are those schools doing well? And so we went to every province and looked at uh, two outstanding schools among many, which were severely disadvantaged and yet were able to sustain high achievement in particularly science and math. Some of the things that we see in these schools are the kinds of things that you would see in most of the literature on effective schools, for example, which, as you know, is a bit of a cottage industry. All of these things are fairly common sense, like if you have, you know, deeply committed teachers, if you have principals who take up the charge of leadership, you know, if you have kids who come to school and are motivated to learn, if you have parents who participate in the day-to-day -day running of the schools, if you have some of the basic resources available. From the perspective of developing countries, those basic things obviously matter and we confirm that those things operate in those schools. But what we noticed in these schools that was different from all the other township schools and rural schools in South Africa was that they were able to establish a routine, a rhythm, predictability in the school environment, which was completely absent. In other words, the typical township school in South Africa is so dysfunctional that we were surprised to see functionality. We were surprised to see not only that the school you know, uh, was open at 8 and closed at 3 the way it should, but that they in fact started at 6 a.m. and the principal would be there in uh, in a school like in Bill at 5.30 in the morning, you know, ready to receive the kids, doing mathematics lessons before the school starts for the rest of, you know, the institution uh, and making sure that the kids stay after school for more math or physics or whatever lessons they're doing and then making sure that those kids get a motivational speaker once a week and make, all the kinds of things that you would expect in a good school, they not only did that, but more. In recognition of the fact that a kid that comes into a high school, we only work with high schools, already has a disadvantage of five to seven years in the elementary school system that you needed to catch up on, you know, uh, and so on. So the number concept is very poorly developed by your, the time you get to grade eight, which is the start of high school in South Africa. So the schools are playing catch up. Uh, etc. And that's why they start early and finish late. And we felt that those kinds of, those extraordinary efforts, you know, to establish functional school systems, you know, from basic rules of administration, uh, to like keeping records of kids who come and go, which most schools in South Africa don't do well, uh, all the way through to uh, making sure that there's a teacher for every child, in every subject, in every class, every single day, including weekends. We felt that that, the, the, that particular degree of almost hyper-functionality, you know, was what explained why schools could overcome the legacy of, and many of these schools, in fact, doing even better than the traditional white schools or privileged schools simply because of the exertion, the commitment at the school level that had nothing to do with government. And that for us was striking.